I am an ethnobotanist. I'm the first formally trained Indigenous ethnobotanist in Australia, as far as I know. I coordinate the Tropical Indigenous Ethnobotany Centre, which is the first Indigenous-driven centre in Australia that's dedicated to the study of ethnobotany. The centre is housed at the Australian Tropical Herbarium on James Cook University campus in Cairns. Does anybody know what an ethnobotanist does or have they heard of the word ethnobotany? Yeah, just a few. I get asked that question all the time. Traditional owners ask me, what's that long white fellow word? <laughs> and when I explain it to them, they say um, they can relate to it because they understand. Surprisingly, a lot of Western scientists ask me that question as well. And to me, that's, in, that's an indication of the lack of knowledge about Indigenous knowledge, the lack of respect and acceptance of Indigenous knowledge. So what is ethnobotany? Ethno means people plus culture plus plants. Botany is the study of plants. So ethnobotany simply is the study of the relationship between people, plants and culture. As I mentioned before, I coordinate the Tropical Indigenous Ethnobotany Centre and the main aim of the centre is, is to record Indigenous knowledge or um, I use the term Indigenous biocultural knowledge. That's the, the best part of my job actually, is out on country with traditional owners, listening to stories learning about their knowledge, their culture, camping under the stars at night, sitting around the campfire, drinking hot cups of black tea and pannikins. Traditional owners are still connected to their land and culture. They're still passing on that knowledge uh, to the younger generation. I was out with the Umpala clan group from up Cape York one time and a young boy came up to me and he told me how he'd broken a tooth when he was out camping on country with his elders. He said he was in a lot of pain, but he couldn't get to town to see a, a dentist until a few days. He showed me a shrub that he used, to, which he applied to his tooth, and it took away the pain. And that helped him for those few days before he was able to get into town and, and see a dentist. So that young boy, he knew the healing properties of plants. He knew the, uh, the names of the plants, the names of the animals, place names of his country, uh, which he obviously learned from his elders by being on country. So what is Indigenous biocultural knowledge? It's knowledge that encompasses people, language and culture and their relationship to the environment. This is knowledge that they've built up over thousands of years. Through this knowledge they've learned how to live sustainably. They've survived for thousands of years with this knowledge and it's stored in their head. It's passed on orally to the younger generations. But it's also stored in their arts, their language, culture, song, dance, but the interpretations of those stories are in their heads. Um, I came across an old African proverb which says, when an elder dies, a library is burned. Another term we use is biocultural diversity, as opposed to biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth, the plants and animals and the ecosystems in which they live. Biocultural diversity is the description of the link between culture and diversity. People tend to separate the environment or tend to leave people out of the environment. Biocultural diversity is bringing people back into the environment. Indigenous people say they've always been on country, on land. They've always been part of the environment. They've always been part of the furniture. I'm in a unique position. I have my feet in both worlds at traditional knowledge world and the Western science, and I try to be a bridge between those worlds. 
Just because I'm Aboriginal, though, it doesn't mean that I'll get open access to Indigenous communities. Some people think that, but sometimes it works for me. Most times it doesn't because, as an Aboriginal person, more is expected of me. Um, I should know about Indigenous protocols and relationships and all that kind of thing. I believe Indigenous biocultural knowledge and Western science can work together. Indigenous biocultural knowledge can inform and enhance scientific research. Indigenous people, they love working with scientists coming onto country. They love hearing about what Western science thinks of their country. One elder said, I know by our stories how that certain landscape got here. Now I want to know what you people think. The local Dullabit Mullenbutter Yidinji people, they're just south of Cairns here, they have a plant which when mashed and thrown into the creeks or pools of water, it depletes the oxygen in the water and it brings fish to the surface. They're able to gather that fish, pick out what they need, and the fish that is left, after a period of time they come to and they're able to swim away. So that's how they catch their fish in a sustainably way. They have been working with scientists from James Cook University as a way to control the pest fish tilapia. The tilapia has been introduced from another country and it's similar to the carp. It competes with native fish for food and space. Tilapia is listed on the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Top 100 World Invasive Species. So it's a pretty destructive uh, species of fish. So they have trialled this method of the, using the, the plant to bring the fish to the surface by depleting the oxygen. Rather than use dynamite or poisons, which can affect the whole species of fish in, in that creek or water body, it can be used in a sustainable way. These are some of the views from a couple of early explorers. William Dampier said, For the earth affords them no good at all. There's neither herb, root, pulse, nor any sort of grain for them to eat that we saw, not any sort of bird or beast that they can catch, having no instruments wherewith all to do so. They have no boats, canoes, or bark logs. Apparently, Indigenous people survived on just oxygen. <laughs> James Cook was a bit kinder. He said, the earth and the sea of their own accord furnished them with all the things necessarily necessary in life. And he was fer referring to the Google Yumata people from up Cape York. Incidentally, I've worked with the Google Yumata people and they're still on country, connected to land, culture and sharing that knowledge to the younger people. Indigenous biocultural knowledge. There's a huge untapped resource from this knowledge that's built over you know, thousands of years. It can help provide solutions for issues such as climate change, food security, biodiversity and health. Western science is amazing, but so is Indigenous biocultural knowledge. Thank you.